You are listening to a 31 Pearls production audiobook. All rights are reserved. The Book of Gleanings, Chapter 14 The Tribulations of Yosira. These things were written in the Book of the Two Roads. Yosira, who is therein called Yoshira, came from beyond the realm of Athor and was the first king of Tehemut. He established the festivals of the new moon, the festival of wool drawing, and the days of devotion. When first he brightened this land by his presence, the welfare of its people was in the hands of the false priests, who taught that man was a double-spirited being, in whom the spirit of good struggled with the spirit of evil for possession of his soul. Each deed and thought was said to strengthen one or other of the opponents. The people were not completely deceived in accepting this. It is perhaps an earthly distortion of reflected truth, but neither is it wholly true. In the days of old, men saw truth but dimly, for it could be only partially revealed in accordance with their ability to understand it. Truth is a light growing even brighter in the darkness of man's ignorance. And as the generations pass and go down into dust, men see more clearly. Each light-bearer dispels a little more darkness, and Yosira was a light-bearer, the greatest of them all. Before Yosira came, bearing the lamp of brilliant light, Truth was but dimly perceived in this land. The false priests of those days taught that when the great God created man, he held back immortality as a special gift for those whom he favored. This is not the attitude of one who is great, and therefore such doctrine cannot be accepted. That these priests were misled themselves was not so great an evil as their misleading of others who trusted them. A true priest should approach as close as possible to the shrine of truth and interpret whatever he sees there as clearly as his ability and the understanding of his followers permit. In those olden days no man had yet been reborn to wisdom and enlightenment. Therefore nothing was known about the gardens of light and men believed in the dark abode alone. This dark abode was a place where sand and dust were the sustenance of the dead, whose bodies were clothed in long hair and feathers. Men in those olden days knew little more than that. They also believed that souls risen to glory really consumed the food and wore the garments and ornaments provided for their use. They did not know, as we do, that as the soul is subtle itself, so can it use naught but the subtle elements of earthly things. Even now incense is burned before the statues of those risen to glory, so that they may receive their portion. There are those who believe that the sustenance of the soul and its continued life depends upon the monthly communion sacrifice of its kinsmen on earth. As a man who walks with a lamp at night is attacked by those who lurk in the darkness, so are enlighteners who seek to bring light into the gloom of ignorance, attacked by those whom it would reveal in their true likeness. Thus, when Yosira cried out against those who, while not permitting the slaying of men and women in their daily lives, nevertheless allowed a child to be slain as sacrifice, or buried beneath the pillars they raised up, he was condemned as an enemy of the gods. When Yosira was in the land far up the river of life, one named Azula, who stood close to the right hand of Yosira, slew a man who was kindred to the leopard. This enraged the god of these people, for the slain man's blood cried out to him. Therefore men of the leopard came into the land of the east, seeking to slay Azula for his offense against their god. But he had withdrawn to a place of hiding. 
So when they found their search to be in vain, the men of the leopard returned to their place, informing their priests of their failure. The priests then held the rituals for calling down the war power, drawing it down in strength. Then, because Yosira was the overlord of Azula, the men of the leopard went forth against him, claiming the right of war. But in the night, when the hostile host waited before the camp of Yosira, the war priest defiled himself, and so the war power failed to make faint the hearts of those with Yosira, the war priest having lost control over it. Thus the war power came into the hands of Yosira, and he cast it back. So it fell upon the men of the leopard, and their knees were loosened and their bowels went to water, and they fled from that place. The men of the leopard dwelt within the forests towards the sun-setting side of the moving waters, and Yosira pursued them there. He did not enter the thick forest, but coming to an island in the midst of the waters, he made camp there. He had a prisoner whom he released, sending him to the priests with this message. Come in peace, that I may hear your complaint and judge whether it be just. But the priests of the men of the leopard came down only to the edge of the waters, and would not go further. And they called out across the waters, What was just heretofore is just no longer, for this is now a matter to be settled between our kindred and those who are with you. For blood still cries out for blood. Hearing this, Yosira answered, Let us be wise. There are judges above us. So let the God of the moving waters decide the matter. To this the priests said, It is well. Then Yosira took Azula into a boat, rowing him through the waters against the south wind. Stopping the boat, Yosira commanded Azula to leap into the waters so he might be tested by swimming. And this Azula did. He swam powerfully, and the god of the moving waters did not take him, for Yosira had covered the waters with his power. So the waters bore up the swimmer, carrying him in safety to the shore. Then Yosira sat down with the chiefs of the men of the leopard, and made a covenant with them, and with other peoples likewise. This was that, when a man slays another among his own kindred, none among them shall protect him and he shall be either slain or cut off from those of his own blood. However, if the slain man be of a kindred different to that of the slayer, then the slayer may be slain by men of either kindred. If the kindred of the slayer would avoid the toll of blood, then they must send a token to the kindred of the slain man, together with an account of the deed. They must also agree that the blood be upon their own heads and revenge in their hands. An account of such revenge shall be sent to the kindred of the slain man together with the forfeiture. Then all the kindred bound themselves with a great oath, declaring that if blood cried out from the ground in vain, then the night terrors and bloodshades would be called upon to fall upon the kindred of the slayer and not upon the kindred of the slain. It was at this time, when this covenant was made, that Yosira spoke in this manner to his sons. These are the meats which are accursed, and shall not be eaten. All the meat of any beast which dies of itself, all the meat of any beast which has been slain as a sacrifice to the small gods, all the meat of any beast which has been slain by wild beasts, and all the meat which has been offered up on the door stones. These are unclean meats. When Yosira had gone throughout the land and purified it, and bound up its wickedness with curses, he taught those who dwell there the making of waterways. He also instructed them in the meanings of the heavenly signs. He built Pisetai, in the midst of the reed lands, and drain the swamps. Then he raised up the first temple of brick and stone. 
At this time he established those who were recorders of the days and seasons. While Yosira was at Pesetai, the priest stirred up the people against him, and so he fled to the land of God with his sons and blood kindred. But his wife and his youngest son did not go with him, for they were with her father in the land from whence the great river flowed. This was the land of Kanto Yamtu, where priests taught that death is not the normal lot of man. These priests said that though their forefathers of old were just as mortal as men, their forefathers' fathers were heirs to immortality on earth. This is an erroneous teaching, one belonging to the childhood of man. But later men were taught that death is just the departure of life which takes flight with the soul. While Yosira was at Pesetai, his true son, Manindu, commanded the Mesetai, who were a host of men and workers in brass. They subdued the whole land, returning it to Yosira. Later it was delivered into the hands of Manindu, whose seal is on it even yet. After the time of Manindu, the people forgot the god of gods, for he appeared distant from them and they worshipped other gods whom the priests devised. The light was dimmed and only poorly reflected in small hidden shrines.